And hello and welcome back to Trails of Cold Steel 4. Last time I wasn't sure what bonding events I wanted to do out of them. Uh, so I made a comment asking, Hey guys, do you have any suggestions? And I think I know two of the ones I want to do. And then I came to this and I was like, Oh fuck, I forgot Toa even had one. I thought I had three left for some reason. <laughs> I guess I'm doing Toa since I just forgot about her so hard that it would be mean if I didn't. <laughs> She was in a similar frame of mind as the rest of them, so I guess let's do this for now. Uh, you need to figure out what you're lacking. Yeah, I haven't done a ton of stuff with guys. I consider him one of Reen's close friends. He's cool. Hey, I've got a proposal for you guys. How about we pay a visit to Brigadier General Bardius? Hmm? Rumor has it that his ancestors are warriors from Nord, right? So wouldn't that make him the perfect person to ask? Maybe you'll be able to get a few tips that'll help you work out any areas you feel you're lacking in. That does make some sense now that I think about it. Though, he must be pretty busy with the Viceland army. Well, once it's settled, let's make sure to get in touch. Sure. I'm sure you could spare ten minutes or whatever it technically ends up being. Met up in the Avon Hills. Thanks for agreeing to meet with us, Brigadier General. Yes. Yeah, we appreciate you taking time out of your schedule. I wouldn't do this for just anyone. But since it's you guys, I got Lady Aurelia to lend us the... Baklutha? Is that the, uh, ship over there? Guess it helped since it was free at the time anyways. Uh, I may have lost touch with my heritage, but I figure I can still do some good here. I truly am thankful you, uh, that you came. I'm ready to dig into whatever you have to teach me. Whatever it takes to hone my skills as a Grawls Ritter, and protect my loved ones from whatever danger there may be. Ah, so that's how it is. Say, guys, how do you like to spar with me? Huh? Right now? Why not? You gotta put that strength of yours to the test if you want to find your weak spots. But be warned, I will go all out against you, and I expect you to do the same. What do you say? I'm up for it. Chances like this don't come along every day. Come at me with everything you've got. I want to fight these. <laughs> Damn it. There are so many bonding events with these sparring matches, and I just want to fight them. It sounds fun. A fierce battle between guys and Waltz followed. Waltz struck, in, uh, struck out in full force, unleashing moves that had even forced the almighty conflagration into a corner. Like, even if I lose, I'm not, like, taking it as a challenge. It's just fun to get into the actual fight and do it myself. Guys refused to give in, and with the power of his stigma, he's able to match his opponent blow for blow. <laughs> Gaius, you kept pace with him the whole time. That is no, that is no small fee. Looks like the rumors about you were true, Black Whirlwind. <laughs> You're not so bad yourself, Soaring Phoenix. You got some impressive skills. Between your own natural ability and that stigma, I don't see this battle ending anytime soon. Guess I have to call in some friends. Are you gonna ride them, or are you just gonna have them like go trample guys? Horses. That's right. Through bred war horses from the Bardi's family's own stables. They're both fine and courageous mounts. Sorry, nonsensical mounts. You think you can handle them? We're settling with a the joust then. Hmm. <laughs> fine by me. The battle moves into a head and head. To the metal moved into a head-to-head -head jousting match. Looked to be a long, grueling fight before either combatant gave in. But then... Uh, it, God. It's over already, huh? I've got to hand it to you, Wallace. You really gave me what for out there. It turned out to be not so evenly matched as before, huh? Could you tell what the difference there was, Gaius? 
Yeah, I think so. I had a feeling I'd lost sight of something all this time, but now it's finally starting to fall into place. Gaius. Oh, good. All that wasn't for nothing, then. It's been a while, so I think I'll treat my horse to a longer ride. Why don't you stay back and rest a bit? So, something like your connection back to Nord and the skills you developed over those many years you're de-emphasizing in favor of the Grawl's Ritter stuff? And that's what you're losing sight of? You gonna be alright? Yeah, just a couple scratches. I think he held back a little for the horse's sake. So kind of in all of him, though. It didn't take much for him to see right through me. It sounds like you've pieced something together yourself, at least. Yeah. I know now where I've been going wrong. I got so caught up in being a Grosvitter that I forgot about what was so important to me as plain old guys or Zell. The reason I came to Erebonia, to Thor's, was to learn about the outside world. To take all that I picked up here and turn it into strength to protect my homeland. You know, thinking back, the rest of us were really amazed by the lengths you were willing to go to do that. You had to adapt to an entirely new landscape, all for the sake of taking care of what you had back home. That really means something. I can say we were all inspired by how devoted you are to your land and your people. <laughs> I don't know if I'd go that far. I feel like I was just charging and not thinking things through. But it is true. I always had Nord and everyone there at the front of my mind when I did. Even inheriting the stigma and everything we went through during the Civil War was part of that. They're the winds that guided me from the very start. And the reason I'm standing here right now I guess having wings makes it harder to feel connection to the people back on the ground. But now, I feel like I've finally got my head out of the clouds and back where it belongs. And I'll see to it that it stays that way. Erebone is my second home. I'll protect it to the very end, along with Nord and the rest of the continent. Even the whole world, if it comes to that. <laughs> you never do anything by halves, do you? I'm glad you've got your head together, Gaius. I'll be counting on you then. I'll say, him with his hand like that, that's a good shot. It feels it does hold him. It frames him very well, both visually and his character. Of course. Right back at you, Reen. Welcome back. I'll ready to keep going. I was hoping you'd be up for another jousting match. My performance back there was just <laughs> pitiful. This time, I'll show you what a Nordic warrior really can do. So, what do you say? Brigadier General Wallace Bardius. <laughs> now this is what being young's all about. You got yourself a rematch, guys, Warzone. Should be at least closer this time. Ah, cool. Uh, watch their equally balanced fight to the end. Oh, oh so close. What one will he have vantage masters? <laughs> that should be enough to push him. Going to train some more? Yeah, my sparring session with the Brigadier General opened my eyes to what I'd forgotten. I want to internalize the emotion I felt while the memory is still fresh. Yeah, that's one way to do it. As long as you know when enough's enough. Of course, I know my limits. You've got nothing to worry about with me. Good for you, Gaius. Getting your uh, perspective back on your head properly. Gaius has always been not the most <coughs> interesting, interesting character, but yeah. I've always liked his uh, relation with Reen and. Wait, is this where Toa was? No, front deck, okay. She's outside, I forgot. And I always liked the concept of Nord and all that sort of stuff, and what he stood for and everything. Um. 
Yeah, sure, we can do that. Uh, I feel, I would feel bad at this point, basically. After completely forgetting her to just not do it at this point. Especially since I wasn't accounting for one of the bonding events. Okay, Toa, here's an idea. How about we go to the Nord Highlands together? Oh, more Nord Highlands stuff, yay! Hmm? I've actually been discussing this with guys for a while. It sounds like it's going to be one of the major fronts of the war, so doing some recon would be smart. The Merkava is under repair, so guys has kind of given up on the idea. But we should manage fine if we just have a Valmar take us there via the uh, Spirit Bath. Th that would definitely work, but... Aren't you really busy, Ring? And I think this could lead to some useful information for the Radiant Wings. I'm sure guys wants to visit his family, and sound like bringing you along would cause things to run any less smoothly. In fact, I'd wager the, uh, the opposite. Having you along would be a great help. What do you say? W well... No! And then the bonding event. You forgot about me, Reen, in between episodes. I'm not gonna let you do this. <laughs> Hesitance, but left a one of Gaius, went to Spirit Bath, took Valama, went over there. We really made it. <laughs> I knew we could count on Reen and Valmar. Their defenses are still down. Uh, guys, you should get going. Right. I'll be back after I check in with my family. This is a nice follow-up to Guys' bonding event, too. They actually uh, go together really well right now. I'll leave the repeater to you, Toa. Of course. Give your family my best. Yeah. Okay, guess we better get to sitting at the repeater. Yeah, maybe we could set up behind a boulder where it can't be seen from the watchtower or anything like that. Uh, the airship went down just beyond this mountain range, right? Yeah, the no man's land right between Erebonian and Calvert. The flies? Uh, the files said all the evidence of the incident's been covered up. Seems there's nothing left here. No. Oh. Hey, Reen, thank you. I think I feel a bit better now. As a kid, I was pretty unhappy that I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to my parents. But now, I feel like I can finally move on. You're lying. Huh? I know, because this is exactly what I would do. Come on. How long have we known each other? You can't hide that from me. You're always putting others before yourself even more than I do. But right now, there's no one here but you and me. For once, just be honest and open about how you're feeling. Okay? I mean... <laughs> Do I look that down about it all? It was 17 years ago. I was barely only four at the time, so I barely remembered at all. Just blurry images of people I guess must have been my mother and father. Grief isn't determined by time. Besides, that's not all, is it? Grief isn't the only thing you've been holding back. It's okay, just let it out. I mean, why would you say all this to me? I've been trying so hard not to let it get to me, but now... The war's just a few days away, and my uncle's been drafted. Oh. See... <laughs> my... Mother died when I was young, and I sort of have a similar thing to what Toa said, where it's blurry images, vague memories, that sort of stuff. Like, you have feelings for them as a role in your life, but knowing them as a person 
when one of your parents, or even both of your parents, like this, die young, uh, when you're young, to the point where you don't really remember stuff clearly down the line, it's honestly one of my bigger regrets involving that is more so that I remember so little. It feels like a disservice, and it does feel like something that gets to you. Even if everything... and But that's the thing, is that that's a regret. The things I do remember feel more defining to me. So stuff like her uncle, the people that have been there, that have been there to, over time, now being in trouble... It's a balancing act, for sure. I get it, at the very least. Hundreds of thousands of lives, maybe even millions, are hanging in the balance here. I was so happy when Angie came back, I could have cried. I, I vaguely remember you actually crying. But George is still with the enemy. There's no guarantee he'll change his mind anytime soon. And then there's Crow. It seems like it's impossible for him not to disappear forever when this is all over. We don't even know for sure what'll happen to you, Irene. Yeah. My body is linked to the Great Twilight, and no. We all know about my heart. I might be headed towards St. Vita's Crow. Then why? Why are you making me speak from the heart? I've been at my limit so long, trying to keep it in the whole time. Crow, George. My parents, my grandfather, everyone I've ever loved has disappeared. I lose you too. I, I can't. No, it's okay, Toa. I'm here. I don't know what the future holds, but I promise you, I won't give up until the very end. So, please. Oh, you're impossible, Reen! Even if it's just an empty promise, I want to hear you say it! You bring me all the way out here, hold me in your arms, and still... still... It's not fair! It's just not fair! It's hard to make promises you don't think you can keep. That's true. Yeah, this breeze feels kind of nice, doesn't it? Yeah. Thank you, Freen. I've been holding all that in for a long time. I never realized just how stubborn I am. Is this a new song? I legitimately don't feel like I've heard this one before. Hmm. Angelica and Crow knows what you're going through. Everyone was worried, so I took the liberty of doing something about it. I did show you a pretty pathetic side of me before graduation, after all. Oh, right. Ah, uh, right. <laughs> I almost forgot about that. Was that a bonding event, too? Or was that just a straight-up scene that happened? I don't even remember. They make for really good friends. I, I really do think that. That was all Crow's fault. Then he came back and acted like it was nothing. Yeah... His behavior still bothers me a bit. Well... It looks like we've been embarrassed ourselves in front of one another now, huh? Fate must have brought us together, right? <laughs> I consider it an honor. Hey, Reen. I mean it. You know? Every word. Hmm. Uh, it's your fault I'm saying this, you know? I didn't have the courage to bring it up until now. Brought me all the way out here and made me spill my guts. But at least I don't have anything left to be afraid of after that. So, uh... <laughs> Think of it as payback. I've still got plenty of flowers. Want to go offer them together? I'm sure my parents will appreciate it. Sure. I'd be glad to. Uh, 
Got the prayer and went back. That was nice. Uh, one thing I really liked about that, too, is that it's just a really close relationship. Romantic or even friend-wise. Oh, shit, I didn't even see her over here. <laughs> well, that, I really liked how that one played out. Partly because I've always seen Reen and Toa as just really similar people who make really good friends. But I don't think they'd make a very good, like, romantic pair. And that was interpretable enough that the love is in the same way that she loves George and Crow and Hanshi and all that sort of stuff. That's how I see it more so. Where, you know, it could be romantic if it developed in the right way, but it doesn't need to be. You just love someone because they're important to you. Uh, what a, what a... Yeah, what are you doing here? I was going to ask you the same. I didn't expect to run into you here. I'm taking a break from work. Gotta think something over. So convenient to have a nest yet. You can smuggle goods easily while enjoying the wind in your hair as you speed through the air. The Bobcat's not bad, but can't carry tanks or soldats. I didn't think of my future of work opportunities. It's going to be clear to me that an airship is a must. <laughs> okay. I can't help but worry whenever she starts laying out her future plans. Hmm. I really want to get an airship for myself. Decent size like this one would be great. That must cost a kidney, and I ain't selling mine. Ooh, ooh, maybe Mom will buy me one. With her kidney? <laughs> She's eyeing a real fully loaded airship with the same glee. No more kid would, uh, for a toy of one. Yeah, uh, that sounds about right. That definitely sounds about right. And that means, yeah, I think I might have missed this before. Watching the store today, huh? Get anything new in recently? Uh, at what point did I stop questioning this canine shopkeeping business exactly? Uh, no, no, nothing. Sorry. Thanks for everything you do for us, Cerberus. You are the bestest boy. I wish I could have bonding events with you. I do. I legitimately do. Uh, you want to complete the training. Sure. Let's go. Would it be okay if I accompanied you, Laura? We'll need to do... We'll need all the training we can and we... Uh, we can muster if we hope to get through this uh, coming rivalry, after all. I see. I don't mind, of course. Having you there should make things no trouble at all. Let's be off, then. Aye, aye, Capitan. Let's go. Reen and Laura took Valmar to Bryonia Island. Decided to finish the training with a no-holds-barred sparring match. They spent another 20 days there, stranded. Nothing to eat but coconuts. They set up to find an appropriate spot. Ooh. Reen, what's the matter? Uh, presence, it's... Uh-oh. This is like... It, it is impossible. Isn't this what Rose... Same as what happened with Priscilla. Can other things do this? Ah, uh, I'm confused. Oh, interesting. Oh, these things have always been awesome. Look. Yeah. It's like the coolest monster design in the entire series. <sighs> That's the thing we fought in the old schoolhouse! Oh, Harabonius. I was told a number of them appeared in Heimdall beside the Grawl. But it's huge! How could something like that have been there without us? No, it can't be! Could it be due to the Septarian shell buried here? I, I think so. I mean, it's a fragment of something from before the Great One was formed. Everything that's going on with Operation Gormigander could have been uh, could have set off a reaction between the shell and spirit veins. What the Where's it going? Looks like it's heading off for Ordis! Well, this would have been a bad one to ignore. What insane destructive power! 
can't let something like that reach Ortis. Maybe it's because we're in the subspace, but I can't sense Valimar. Their Stu isn't connecting either. We won't be able to get in touch with the others for a while. We'll just have to stop it ourselves then. It won't be easy, but as long as I'm with you, I know we'll stand a chance. Together, we'll find a way. You're right. Let's go, Laura. Oh, let me find it, please. Please. No, oh, the battle against the giant low air pony is raging long and hard. Green and lower major G took use of the terrain and gradually pushed Goliath back. Working closely and seeing they continue their onslaught until finally. Termination slash dusk! Now taste the wrath of the Alsates! Radiant Phoenix Blade! So is the implication is that they're shadows of the previous Septarians then? Is that what we're going to say? Conceptually? It, it's like the leftover shadow that's still there because it's a very abstract concept. <sighs> ah, looks like that, dude. That trick. Nice job, Laura. I knew you had it in you. The technique just now was every bit as good as the Viscounts. Better, even. You think so? It didn't feel quite right to me. Have I really have taken a step closer to my father? <laughs> Laura? Sorry, it's just so bizarre to see how far we've come. A single lower Abonians is almost more than the entirety of Class 7 could handle once. But now, just two of us can defeat one. I never thought fighting for someone with all your heart would grant this much power. Laura? I will neither run nor hide from my feelings. I love you, Reen. Not just as a dear friend, or as a fellow swordsman walking the same path, but with my whole heart. It's alright. You don't have to give me an answer. This is hardly the time or place for romance. There are other more important things that demand our attention. You must win the rivalries, and I have to surpass my father. To do that, we need to dedicate ourselves to improving our skills. Y you're right. I'll be counting on you from here on. To the lodge, patch up the wounds, short rest, they return the ship together. Neato. Okay. I did not expect freaking Loa. You know, there was a bunch of them that showed up, too. Back at the end of Cold Steel 3, we never really got an explanation of how they technically work. I know it's the explanation of it's the curse, it's spirit veins and stuff like that. I'm more talking about a detailed, more conceptually what they are outside like the my best guess is that they're literally just a shadow of what was there not even a fragment of the power but a shadow of the power just like the residue like a shadow is a reflection of something that exists in the world that sort of thing and it's just the shadow that was left over when the thing that created the shadow disappeared and as abstract as that is that's my best guess <laughs> uh Hey, Alfin. You're the one that was saving the last? Right, you got a letter that looked like it would be from Cedric. Let's go. Allow me to serve as your escort, your highness. You do want to go find out what this is all about, right? You know me too well, Reed. Are you sure it's alright, though? What if this is some form of trap? It'll be okay. I'll be right there to protect you no matter what happens. Let's get to Valmar and head on over. Reen and Alphen awaited the chance to warp function to the thing that they made away through the uncannily quiet roads onto, onto the old field exercise on the South Ocean Highway. There you are. What kept you? I had a feeling it'd be you. 
da 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 his, his theme song. Da 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 da. Reen, I see you've come along as Elfin's personal escort. I must apologize for the unsightly display you were forced to witness yesterday. Your Highness. Enough beating around the bush, Cedric. Why send me a letter like that so suddenly? Don't tell me. Was this all just a ploy to get Reen to come? Nothing of the sort. <laughs> I gave up on Reen a long time ago. We'll have to face each other in the rivalry someday, after all. You're the one I wanted to see, Alvin. I'll get right to the point. I want you to leave the Crimson Wings. Oh, you're not even getting the name right. It's a radiant motherfucking wings, motherfucker. Go to Ordis. You'll be safe there with Mother until this all blows over. So that's it. As if I could ever do something so preposterous. How can you expect me to sit idly by while Oliver and his allies fight tooth and nail to... What does it matter either way? Do you honestly believe you can make a difference? The real world is nothing like the confines of the palace walls or the gates of St. Astraea. Don't stand a chance on your own. Well, one, she's not alone. And two, she's already made a difference. She's been a representative for the family when Oliver was out. I think... I mean, Oliver could probably... You know, honestly, I'm not even sure Oliver would make a good representative for the Imperial family at this point. It's a difference all the same, though. Her Highness has become an invaluable member of the Nonsenses 2's crew. Oh, right, and she's helping out running the ship. I forgot about that. Just a detail, I forgot. We have no reason to doubt her abilities. Perhaps that was overstating things. I don't think you're entirely helpless. But it's a big ship, and they're pretty capable of those students on board as it is. It's not going to drop out of the sky just because you decide to leave. Perhaps you did finally man Perhaps you did manage to find a purpose during the Civil War. As a symbol of the Imperial family. But there exists no such place for you in a squabble between Norman Gander and Neil Mirage. You know that, don't you? This has gone beyond just a mere domestic conflict. This is a war that could very well engulf the entire world as we know it. The fury that's about to be unleashed is greater than you could possibly imagine. It's only a matter of time before you, Olivet, and Crimson Wings get caught in the crossfire. Rain it means, you motherfucker. And once that happens, there won't be any last minute miracles left to save you. Reen, surely you know where I'm coming from. I know you care about Elise, every bit as much as I do about Alfin. Is a warship really any place for them? Don't we owe it to our sisters to get them away from all this fighting? Well... Yeah, he's, he's not the person you want to ask about uh, how to treat your sisters. I mean, it's too kind to say it, but the fact is you're not helping Alfin. You're not a soldier, you're not even a military academy student. You have no business being anywhere near a battlefield. Think of Mother. Having you close by would be such a comfort to her. Or you could go and be with Father before his surgery. Though even that's a little too close to the front lines for my liking. That's enough, Cedric. Thank you. I know this is all just your way of showing me that you care. I care. You're my sister, my kith and kin. You and your children always stood up for my sake. Don't those who deem me too weak to be heir, comments who fall blindly over your intellect and grace, you defended me to all of them alike. I was so grateful. At the same time, so, so frustrated. But now our roles have reversed. Yeah, the thing you've been desperately wanting for a while now, isn't it, Ben? Uh, it's time for the strong to protect the weak, the way it should be. You're right. Sometimes I hate just how powerless I become. You're right. Sometimes I hate just how power, uh, power... You're right. Sometimes I hate just how powerless I've been. But I'm not going to use that as an excuse to just give up on myself. I'm sorry, Cedric. It's taken me this long to bring myself to say that. When your health failed you during the war, there's nothing I could do. 
somehow Chancellor Osborne saved you? That was when your lust for power began. Wait. I've, his health failed you during the war. I'm trying to remember exactly how that all played out, but... Is Cedric being kept around as an immortal, too, via his connection? Ooh, I never thought of that before. Huh. You were like a different person. As time went on, the change in you started to frighten me. I felt so guilty for not being there when you needed me most. I just didn't know how I could face you anymore. Perhaps a part of me felt like you'd grown up and left me behind, too. Alfin. But look that but look where that's gotten us now. We loved our family more than anyone, and yet did nothing to protect Father and Oliver from their fates. I'm no better for letting you. T stop it! Stop it right now! I will not! We need to talk about this now more than ever! Oh my god, our meal mirage! None of it means a single thing! The one thing that's always mattered to me, to us, above all else, is family. Whether crimson or radiant, I have no intention of leaving these wings. I will find the strength to support Oliver and Marine, and even to stand against you should it come to that. This is often. I am sorry you feel that way, Alfin. This is your final chance. And Cedric, we'll put an end to this next time we meet. Permanently. Alfin, Reen, I hope you don't come to regret this path you've chosen. Cedric, wait! Father's surgery is coming up. Is it too much to ask you to pray for him? The whole family bands together. Adios is sure to hear us. Majestically said, your highness. It's conviction like that that makes you the pride of the Radiant Wings. Fall of Erebonia, even. I'm sorry, Reen. I know I went too far. But I had to say something. So why... Why did things have to turn out like this? In spite of it all, he's still my brother. I'm the closest family he has. I'm a big proponent of being working for your ideals, but you know, not necessarily expecting them. Work for the world you want to see, but be realistic about the likely result. Essentially. Exactly. You reached out to him in a way only you could. I would be disappointed if Alfin just gave up on her ideals for the sake of trying to purely help Cedric. He may not realize how right you were just yet, but it'll come around eventually. Kurt and I will make sure of it. Reen! Oh, Reen! I didn't advance that. Reen and Alfin use the Valimar to escape city limits to turn the nonsense too. Yeah, that's about how I expected that to go. Thank you for all the time you spent with me, Reen, for being at my side. It's been a true honor, your highness. I think that was the first time Cedric and I truly share how we felt with each other. And though I didn't mean for you to see that side of me, you have nothing to be embarrassed about, I promise. You're so kind, Reen. I must appreciate it. I've decided it's finally time that I face him in earnest. Please accompany, Reen. I need someone else at my side. Of course, your highness. No problem. 
Uh, an opportunity to tell I've heard about Cedric when... Elise was asking Elisa about the terminal earlier. I should join them too when things have calmed down. Okay. And those are the bonding events. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I'm not really a stickler about seeing absolutely everything. Not that I wouldn't enjoy seeing the other stuff. I feel like this is a long enough game as it is that I don't... If I was a stickler about being a completionist about it instead of just doing things at a pace I felt like I wanted to do, then everything... My enjoyment of it would fall apart. <laughs> Pretty darn quickly, honestly. Like this. There are so many people to talk to. I think I'm just going to go look around for people that look like they're interesting to talk to. Like... You, person, no, you're just a tourist. Never mind, you're not interesting. <laughs> Rather than trying to talk to everyone and see if they have anything interesting, there's just too many at this point. It's part of the reason I think Cold Steel 3 and Cold Steel 1 and Crossbow games were really good at that aspect of it, just because they were a, they were an isolated, interesting hub area where you knew people, you saw their lives grow, it was an entire country okay. with multiple cities that you're going on and on around and there's so many people to talk to and keep up with where the interest sort of dies down a bit per person and the interesting aspects die down themselves in a sense. I, I think any games in the future would be best served by keeping the hub area concept. Because I feel as though that just gets the right balance between the, like, growing living world and making everything feel like you care about it more. Like, I know in the original Cold Steel 1, I didn't do it as much, but I grew to appreciate it over time. And I think Cold Steel 1, in particular, was one of the ones that did it really well. Crossbell did it well. And Cold Steel 3 went back to that in a lot of ways, too. Now, I get why we're doing this, like, country uh, cross stuff and it's part of the story and all that. But for the sake of that aspect of the games, I feel it works best there. I'm pretty much guaranteed to get. Oh, you guys, you ha you got your draft card. Well, nope. best of luck. Hopefully, there isn't too much fighting. If you're getting uh, drafted this late in the process, you're probably not going to go out to the lines until later on, anyways. So you're going to be the reinforcements that come in and help out later. That's just how these things tend to work. Ah, uh, seems like your transfer is confirmed, Warren Officer Allen. I heard you've been reassigned to the Zalbert Soldat Unit on the front line. I can't imagine General Craig or Lieutenant Colonel Nighthard are going to be happy to hear about that. Really? Then it's a good thing I went over their heads and straight to the IDF for the transfer. Though it's technically not official until the war really starts. Why do you bring it up? You looking for a transfer too? Fort Division's not what it was. You never win any glory unless you're right in the thick of all the carnage. Oh my fucking goodness. I, um, I don't know, sir. Being on a- being on standby and keeping the peace is still an important job. I suppose there's nothing we can really say to convince you of that now, though. But we'll all be rooting for you, anyhow. I don't need you cowards to root for me. I can't believe you'd throw away the chance to crush the Republic once and for all. Well, if you won't come, you won't come. I'll just have to take down that many more enemies in your place. The Republic streets will run red with the blood, with blood for the glory of the Empire. And so that bridge and I might finally have a future. Yes, I'm sure putting yourself in the thick of the worst battling is the best way to ensure you have a future together. That, that doesn't even sound like Alan anymore. The curse's influence over him must be getting stronger. I don't like this. Wow. That is sad. That's just straight up sad. <laughs> Wait, what the fuck? He signed the agreement. Wow, you got level idiot. You didn't notice the carbon paper underneath, did you? You signed two deals at once, you fool. And guess what the one you haven't seen in Dales. What are you talking about? You just donated all your land to me. I'm going to put your tenants to work and have a summer college built here and whatnot. Okay, just rip up the fucking contract. You literally still have it in front of you. Just rip it the fuck up. Why would you reveal this now? I'm gonna put your tenants to work. Have a summer college built here and whatnot. War's not my game. My plan is to live comfortably right here. And that's exactly what I'll do. Thanks to you. <laughs> I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but the contract you spoke of is all soggy and illegible. What? You didn't spill anything on the table. How, this? How did this happen? I suppose the tablecloth was still wet from when I washed it yesterday. 
The paper on the bottom got damp and the ink blotted all over. I... Giles got lucky this time. I don't think a signature on carbon paper is legally sound, but still, it was a really nasty scam. I don't remember who Charles is, but I've been in this area a few times. Is Charles someone I should know? I I've seen this play out a little bit here and there. Interesting. That That's just... Just weirdly evil. Very weirdly evil. Nope. Marcus, hi, arms. I was under the impression that you weren't hiding. Apologies for the intrusion. I want to have a meeting in secret. Do you mind if I use this space? A secret meeting? Uh, make yourselves comfortable. This is your mansion, after all. This is a golden hair young lady. I don't think we've had the pleasure before. It's nice to meet you. I'm Lucy Silen, Secretary of the Grand Prince of uh, the Principality of Remifaria. Today, I'm speaking on behalf of the Grand Prince. Remifaria? Oh, I do have some information on the movements of the country. I thought they joined an alliance with Mildine to take part in the war. I wonder what they're, uh, what they're doing negotiating with the High Arms. So that means Remifaria is still keeping itself open to other options. Marcus Ballad, would it be possible to speak with you? I know that his lordship is well informed of the situation in all aspects. I hope you use your great wisdom to help advise us in our best way forward. <laughs> no, he'll like that. <clears throat> all right, Wilhelm, you have an abundant experience. Uh, you have abundant experience when it comes to political maneuvering. This is easy. And of course, I would definitely offer you the best advice I possibly can. Oh, do you mean it? Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Come now, time is of the essence to make our way. Sure, let's use the office. I'm impressed by how easily you persuaded him. It's due in no small part to the efforts of your lordship. I wonder what else he could do for us. <laughs> Shall we get going? <laughs> we walked in on that, eh? Ah, uh, it seems we came across this at just the right time. Secretary Lucy is holding a meeting with two Marquis. It doesn't look like it's about Operation Mil Mirage either. Hmm. She's in the office. This might be a good time to visit her. Sure. I can do that. Interesting. Yeah. What else could they be planning that would be significant? The daughter of an honorable Remifarian family in the old I am. It's an interesting pair, to be sure. The timing is perfect. I've grown wary of hearing about the government's advice then. Now, let's see what kind of juicy tidbits I can extract from this salon. Okay, are you going to pass it along to someone else? Why, hello, everyone. Could have imagined we running each other again so soon. Good to see you again, Lucy. Sorry if I interrupted your talk. I didn't mean to be a bother. Oh, don't be silly. You're not a bother at all. Besides, the things we're discussing here today affect you just as much as they do us. It's hard to argue, then. But putting that aside for now, I've been traveling a lot lately, so I picked up a very interesting novel to read in transit. Uh, it's set in Remifaria, so that caught my attention. That being said, I'm taking it off my hands. Okay. Oh, is that book set in Remifaria? Now, if I were Kayala, you would have to check to make sure the book, uh, the book wasn't bugged. But registered. No, give I ever offer you will ever contain any sort of listening device. Now I really sort of want to check it. <laughs> Good to know, I guess. Thanks. <laughs> Are they just trying to undermine it from within, maybe? Mm, but it's even possible to stop the government's plans from going forward. To be blunt, preventing the war is no longer an option at this point. However, we can mitigate the damage uh, now by preparing support structures for refugees and making plans for post-war um, restoration, which leaves us with much to think about. Uh, which much more to think about than if we only had to worry about stopping it. She's right. The war will bring it a great deal of disorder. How many people are in power and are politically gagged at the moment? Incautious behavior may put a target on our backs. I suppose you have a point. Where to the world is stood up in the air? What kind of prospects will we have when the dust finally clears? Fair enough. An interesting discussion to have at the very least. 